Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome home to USA Global TV and Radio, where we provide world-class education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. I am Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and it is my pleasure and privilege to be here welcoming our worldwide audience to our show today, which is Hot Topic. And if you've been following the show, you know that we get people from all over the world. We had a presidential candidate who is uh, from California who is here with us recently. We've had somebody who is in Ghana who is teaching people about cervical cancer and how to protect yourselves. So we never know what we're going to get on this particular show. Our guest today is no stranger when it comes to media and entertainment. He is also a television show host, and he also is producing all kinds of content out there in the world. His name is John Morley, and he is a serial entrepreneur who helps people tell stories, and he's going to tell us his today. Today. Welcome, John. Hello. How are you, Dr. Jacqueline? It's a privilege to be with you guys today and to talk with your audience. Thank you so much, John. Where are you joining us from? So I'm joining you from the beautiful Franklin Lakes in Bergen County, New Jersey, which is for those of you guys that know New Jersey, it's about 40, 45 minutes without traffic outside of New York, Manhattan. Fantastic. Well, I'm from New Jersey and, and live there part of the year. So I'm a big fan. Yay, New Jersey. So what part of New Jersey were you from? So I lived in Cherry Hill for a while, and we have a place in Avalon. I know both of them. Sure. That's a couple hours from us here. (laughs) So, John, as a serial entrepreneur, I'd like to just start off with that because we have so many people who watch this show or our business show, and they're in a corporate position. They really hate it, but they're so afraid to go out on their own. And the fact that you're a serial entrepreneur means that you've had or have more than one business. Tell us your backstory. Yes. So, Dr. Jacqueline, I um, first want to tell you my story from being in uh, college. I started out um, and I decided to start um, an IT company while I was in college. I knew that I wanted to to do something different. I knew I want to have my own business, but I wasn't really sure. So when I was a junior, I started fixing people's computers for only ten dollars, um, basically um, uh, on the on the phone. I think I was charging uh twenty dollars in person but that wasn't per hour that was one flat fee regardless of of what I needed to do uh, except parts so I won't get into all that but I will tell you is that when I graduated I was very passionate about this and uh, I didn't know anything about marketing advertising I did know video production and I had done public speaking for quite a while uh, in my college I was uh, president of um, the student um, basically the president of presidential council, which is like a, a president of all the presidents of, um, of the council at our school. And so um, I think what was really interesting to me is that everyone told me, my friends, you know, John, you're not going to know marketing. You don't know advertising. So you're going to need to hire somebody. I'm like, okay, I guess I have to hire somebody. And I believed that for a while. I was paying them a lot of money. And then about I'm going to say maybe not even about uh, maybe seven seven, eight years ago, I got frustrated with that and I fired them. And I decided I needed to build my own printing company. They couldn't print their way out of a paper bag. Got my first loan from the bank. Uh, Usually they stop you from doing things that are foolish. And this bank said, they're going to give me the money, 150 grand for my first print production graphic uh, uh, studio. And then I just got right into it. And, you know, what I find with a lot of media companies is everyone's about, you know, how much how much is it going to cost? But nobody really 
spends time to see, can we help you or can we not help you? And so when I got into media, uh, which was a while back, and in fact, about seven years ago, I actually became a member of the International Press Association. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I have a press badge and all kinds of credentials. But what it means seriously is that I take media very, very seriously. So someone who can't pay me to write a press release or an article that's going to be slanted. I'll write one and they can pay me for it, but I will make sure that it's presented in a factual way. Uh, not one that's going to say, hey, like, you know, we're the best at this. And my question is, well, how are you the best? Well, my parents say I'm the best. Well, that's not going in media. So I'm just very driven to provide content, um, leading lots of different channels, which you guys can check out at BelieveMeAchieve.com, which is where the link tree goes to. But you can just go to BelieveMeAchieve.com. You'll see I have a hat with which one of my company's uh, prints. And the thing is, a lot of people have stories in life. So what I do is I specialize, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I specialize in helping people uh, tell their story. And you might say, well, gee, John, how do you tell your story? Well, it's it's really easy. Um, I do it really well. Um, because I understand what people are going through, people trust me. And that's what I do. I help businesses share their story so they can scale and, yes, be more profitable. Now, you might be hearing that from a lot of people that they help them tell stories. So I'm a little different than most people because when I say that, I help them tell a story. I don't just do that um, in, let's say, video. I do it in audio. I do it in social media. I do it in content. So for those of you that probably remember on the 20, what was it, the 22nd of September? Well, that's when the iPhone 15 family came out um, that you could pre-order. I have my iPhone 15 Pro Max here. Went from the iPhone 15. Um, I iPhone 13 Pro Max, and um, I got the phone on the 29th, as I was supposed to. And um, I wrote my whole um, little mini like experience about how it was buying the phone. It took me 22 minutes because the site wasn't ready to handle the volume. And when I finished my order, they actually had like seven phones left. Within 10 minutes, they had zero phones left. Now there's a month waiting list. So I publish an article every single week. Actually, I publish two. One is a tech article, and the other one is a motivational article. I'm also certified in hypnosis, uh, neuro-linguistic programming, and I'm a coach. And so I believe our whole world is about communication. And when I say it's about communication, that's what I mean. A lot of people don't communicate. And so by not communicating, you are communicating. And, you know, there are different spectrums of communication. The most important thing, ladies and gentlemen, is not what you say. It's how you say it, the tonality. And so I just realized that if I want to be perceived by the world, because the world is about perceptions, right? I've got to make sure that the image I deliver, that the experience that people hear from me, and that's on my daily show, which is IFYL, Inspirations for Your Life, which, by the way, everyone, I think we just cracked 24,000 downloads. And I also have another show, Jay Moore Tech Talk, which is also going into going to be his third year. And I get celebrities. I get guests. I get authors. But there's something I do very unique and different than no other show host does. I care about my show and my content. And I make sure that the guest is going to be good. Everybody does that. I have about a three months to six month waiting list, depending on which show. I promise that if I'm bringing an author on, I think it's a good fit. I will read their whole entire book cover to cover. So whether that's uh, paperback, whether it's digital, I read it so that when I have that interview with that person, I don't just say I read the preface. I read your book. There was a gentleman I was so grateful to have on the air. Um, there are many grateful guests, but I had a gentleman that um, was actually a colonel. His name was Colonel Wayne Phelps. And um, he had reached out to me to be on the show and uh, he sent me his book. So my team had reached out to him because they said, hey, John's studying to get his drone license because you have to have a drone license to be able to, to shoot a video to go on, let's say, a commercial YouTube channel or even for any profitable, any business venture. 
So um, my team said I would read the book. I got the book and I saw the title, The Psychology of Killing Remotely with Drones. And I was like, uh oh, I think I'm in trouble. And I was like, well, what do I do? So I started reading the book. First month, second month, third month. Now, this book was probably over, I don't know, it was probably close to maybe 800 pages, 1,000 pages, something like that, roughly. And um, by the third month, easily, I would have been done with the book. I reached out to him and I said, uh, Colonel, I said, I got to be honest with you. I said, my team had promised you I'd read the book and I'm going to do it, but this book is hard. Not because I'm not great at reading. I love reading. This book is very emotional. And so things like, you know, how was your day, hon? Oh, it was great. Um, I killed 17 people, annihilated somebody, and we have um, a command post going back for somebody else tomorrow. Could you pass me the, um, the ketchup and the salt? And we joke about this, but I read his book cover to cover. And so that's something I do. I don't think I know any other host anywhere that does that. Uh, just this past year, I was invited to go on a national show, uh, which I broadcast every Friday and Tuesday, which we're now hitting 15 million people. And I collaborate with one of the world's top um, real estate professionals. In fact, she became uh, a millionaire uh, before she was actually 21. And so I love to collaborate with people. I love to share information. But let's talk about something that's really important. And that is a business owner an entrepreneur, and a serial entrepreneur. So a business owner, that's a person that has started a business, they want to make a profit, but they're so inundated with tasks from governmental, uh, sales tax, uh, filing requirements, right? And even compliance, insurance, that it's no wonder that people get stressed and sometimes go out of business. If you get past the business owner stage, okay, and you figured out how to make things work, like, you know, how to, you know, get all the wheels in motion, or as we say, get those plates spinning at the same time and, you know, be able to run your business. Well, then you move into another phase. That phase is called entrepreneurship. Well, John, isn't that the same thing as being an owner? No. So an entrepreneur already knows how to run the company. But he or she runs it from being passionate about why they started the company. You might say, when I ask you, why did you start the company? Well, I started the company to make money. No, I didn't start JMore to make money. I started JMore because I saw so many people that didn't know how to fix technology. Did you know that I've designed the security for Wall Street and they're actually one of my clients? So I say this to you because my whole life from then till now and beyond is all about stories. Very amazing, impressive stories, stories that really will shape your life. That's where my phrase came from, believemeachieve.com. And that's actually where the inspiration came from my book that's coming out. It'll be out at the end of this year, early next. And my company, one of them will be publishing it called um, 25 Gifts of Inspiration to Change Your Life and Everyone Else in It You Care So Much About. So an entrepreneur gets creative. Now, if you're saying to me, John, I don't know what creative means. I have no idea. Well, have you ever been one or two? Sure you have. Do you remember being one or two or maybe five? Do you remember maybe a parent or a guardian giving you this bottle, right? And I don't mean alcohol. A bottle that had a little plastic cap on it. Sometimes they're see-through, sometimes they're not. I had a label on it. And I got a great big one. And I opened this, the top, the plastic, and it was a white uh, cap. I unscrewed it and I opened it up and there was mixture inside, bubble mix. And then there's a wand. And this was a big bottle with a really big wand, not the one that's like way deep down. This is one that went all the way from the top and to the bottom, not just a little tiny stick. So you could just reach in there, pull that stick out and just blow. You'd also take that stick and you could just run around your whole body with it. And so when I, did that. It was amazing. That was only about, let's say, four years ago when I decided to talk about the letter I, which we did for imagination. And I said, in life, we need to use our imagination. 
be as creative as you were when you were a five-year-old, a three-year-old, a six-year-old, an eight-year-old, right? And I just said, think as though you were that kid. Because that kid was very resourceful. He got everything he wanted, right? I won't call it manipulating, but he or she was very creative in getting their parents and guardians to get them what they want for the holidays. They drop hints. They're like, hey, mom, uh, you know, they got these things that are on sale now. You make sure you got to tell Santa. Or when it was a birthday time, well, uh, you know, it would really go good with that, um, you know, in television that I got, a new sound card. So I could actually grow intellectually. And the parents are getting impressed because you're using all these uh, fancy words. And so entrepreneurship is when you take your business to a level that's about creation. It's all about creation. And when it's about creation, that's when you start to make money. Because when you do what you're passionate about, and when you help other people solve their challenges, because I only live, ladies and gentlemen, for two reasons, to become a better version of myself and help others become better versions of themselves. That's why I live every single day of my life. And you know what I do every day when I get up and before I go to bed? I spend maybe five or 10 minutes and I go through John's alphabet of gratitude. What's that? I start with the letter A. And I will not just think the word, I'll feel it in my heart. I'm so grateful for all the abundance in this world. Um, you know, people, blades of grass, money, ideas. Right? And so the reason that's important is when we're grateful, we'll get more things in our life that we can become grateful for. I don't know if you know this, but the heart is actually the CEO of the body. Now, the brain is very important, yes, but the heart's even more important. Did you know that there are more connection lines, okay, going from, yes, your heart to your brain, then your brain to your heart. Your heart is the main boss of the body. The brain does some things, right? But the heart still controls things. It has also been proven in science many times that your heart is actually the key to your manifestation. If you're just thinking about something in your life, it doesn't happen until you feel it first. Feel it first, manifest it second. So when you're an entrepreneur and you feel something, you get it. It happens. We become in alignment with it. Just like you guys are, you know, watching or listening to this program, the Hot um, Topic Show. This show is always around, right? But if you're not tuned to this frequency, you're never going to be able to hear it or see it and watch it, right? And so when we understand that premise, that everything we want already exists, we just have to connect to it. That's how I got my first luxury car many years ago. I went down and I drove the car. I felt the car. I smelt the car. I heard the nav in the car. And every night I'd get home in my proverbial car in my chair and I'd press the button, start my car. And I would take a short drive and I would feel what it was like. So being an entrepreneur, will allow you to run your business as a powerful creator. Now, if you say to me, John, I've tried this, but it doesn't work. You can do it. And a, and a uh, serial entrepreneur is not wanted in, in any uh, states illegally. A serial entrepreneur has figured out that you need to do this for multiple businesses. Thank you, John. You brought up so many great points there. Let me see if I can go backwards a little bit. So for people who are watching or listening and they they hear the value that you bring in so many different venues and so many different capacities, they still have that fear 
that, that fear that I am not John and I am going to fail. And you, the, the first story that you shared about the $10 for your service, I, I love that because we never really know our value. We always think, I shouldn't say always, but many times, especially with women, we've had many shows about it. We undervalue ourselves when we put our pricing, we put our content, we put our, our value and our offerings out there. So for somebody who's watching, you're thinking, you know what? I'm not John. I, I can't do it. This guy, everything he touches turns to gold. What would you have to say to them? So I would say to you that I was there once. Okay. And you saw my hat. It says, believe me, achieve.com. Um, there is someone who said something a while ago, very, very meaningful, Earl Nightingale. We become what we think about most often. If we change our words, we'll change our thoughts. If we change our thoughts, we'll change our mind. If we change our mind, we will, in fact, improve our life. And that's what we all want. So it's a belief. And the way I want to hammer this story in um, is this. Have you ever gotten up in the morning? And maybe, I don't know, um, you broke a glass or a mug or maybe you stubbed your toe or uh, bumped your arm or something, right? Is that it? Can anybody happen to anybody, right? You know, I'm sure. Okay. So when that happens, um, here's the key, all right? In fact, this happened to me just the other day. I was doing something and uh, I had some um, family members over and they put the glasses at the edge of one of the counters instead of putting it where I normally put it they put one on the edge and in the morning I got up and the glass broke and I was like okay the glass broke so I'll clean it up and the rest of my day is gonna be a great day and you know I even when I had that premise I went online I said I know there's a great meaning behind breaking a glass you know what it is breaking a glass brings more abundance you see you can create perceptions to mean whatever you want. So we say, oh my gosh, I broke a glass. My days to be horrible. So let's talk about this in the way it typically would for someone. Maybe uh, you're employed by a company, right? And um, you get up in the morning and you broke a glass. You had orange juice poured in a glass. You broke the glass, right? So you got to clean that all up. Now the glass and the orange juice goes all over your pants. Now you have to change. Um, you're running behind you get in your car and now there's an accident and there's traffic up to the kazoo. And so now you get to work, you don't even call them. And there's a high profile client there. And um, they're all sitting around the conference table and they says, uh, what's this? Oh, um, this guy came in because he wanted to learn more about, you know, what you were doing. I said, well, it wasn't on the schedule. No, we just figured he'd pop by and I know you're always here at nine. So I didn't know anybody was coming. You didn't tell me. And the guy responded back. He said, you're right. I didn't tell you. And um, frankly, if um, this is the way you run your own personal life, I don't think we can trust you with our campaign. And he started to feel very bad. And the rest of his day just kind of tumbled down, down, down. But my point is that when something happens in your life, see it as a bump in the road, right? You've all been on, um, I'm going to say, trips. And you've all driven on the road many times. And I'm sure you've gone over a bump, right? When you go over that bump, you're like, oh. But then five minutes later or two minutes later, it's like, were you thinking about the bump? No, we're not. See, when something happens, we need to learn that we have to Take our attention off of it. If we focus all our attention, whether it's on wealth, now I'm not saying don't focus on it, but don't put so much attention on it that it's like it has to be there. We have to detach from things, all right? So um, there's a little exercise that I want to do with you guys. Um, it's one I do a lot in my coachings, and uh, it's called creating an anchor. All right. So what I want you to do, it's really simple is you could take your dominant hand, if it's your left hand or your right hand, I don't care which, and you have your little um, thumb and index finger right here. So what I want you to do is you'll notice there's an area like a, like a crease, okay, right here. All right, great. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your thumb and your index finger, 
okay? And I want you to just lightly uh, crease and just pinch just a little bit, but not hard. And then I want you to think about what you would do with all that money you already have. You have it. What do you want to buy? What would you buy yourself? Um, what would you buy your loved ones? Where would you live? You're going to buy a car and you have so much money, it doesn't matter. So you can have any options, price tags, not really an issue. But you want to make sure you're getting the greatest value. Maybe you have a personal chef come over that's a celebrity and cook you a meal. How does it feel to be treated like royalty? How does it feel to know that you have so much money that you could do anything you want? You have all the time you want in the world because you could pay somebody to do the things that you don't have the time for. So you've gotten your time back. And just tell me, how does it feel right now just knowing that you love money? Money loves you. Money is your friend. And you attract more money every day. You're getting new creative ideas. When you're in those shopping stores, you don't have to worry about taking just one. You can take one of each to figure out which one you're going to wear later. When it comes to the car, oh, I really like the black Porsche. I like the white Porsche, too. I also like the teal Porsche. Hmm. Oh, well, I guess I'll just get one of each. And so I'm pitching my hand just like this. And right now, I want you to just feel how you would feel right now if your bank account, let's say, were to have $10 million in it. How would you feel after taxes? How would you feel? I know you'd feel really great. What would you like to do for maybe one of your loved ones? Would you like to take them out to dinner? What would you like to do for charity? And the best way to give to charity is when they don't know who it's coming from. Of course, you can take the tax uh, break, but the best way to give is when you give from the heart. Feel how that feels so well. When you can't take it anymore, let go of your thumb and index finger. Now, all you need to do is take your thumb and index finger and just pinch lightly. And you'll suddenly feel those feelings again. Pretty cool, right? And now you should do this activity maybe once an hour. Do it and then just enjoy that feeling. And when you do it like that, your body's going to see it as playful. You see, the reason why people don't get things in their lives are like, oh, that won't happen to me. I'm not John. You're putting so much stress into it. You're like, I have to have it now. I got to have the $10 million now. I have to have the relationship now. I have to have my Porsche tomorrow. I have to have it right now. No, you don't have to have it right now. The universe has lessons it wants to teach you. And we're saying, you know, I'm always getting these situations. Yeah. And when they happen to me, you know what I say? I'm so grateful. I got another lesson that I get to learn from. So doing this anchoring technique is great. Um, before I started doing public keynote speaking, I've spoken for Harvard, I've spoken for Yale, ADP, and many others. People would always get nervous about speaking. I never got nervous about speaking. But I wanted an extra boost when I was on stage. So I create an anchor. When I stand a certain way, I get this certain rush that gives me an even more, um, let's say, charged attitude. You guys know I have passion right now. Imagine me being on stage and being 10 times more passionate than I am now. That's pretty hard to believe. So the thing is, you can do this, all right? And Patanjali said something, which we learned from Dr. Dwayne Dyer, who was his mentor, uh, rest his soul. He said, uh, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Let me say that two more times. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Now, you might be one of these people saying, hey, how does that work? Well, there's something called a RAS, a reticular activating system in our, in, our, in our head. The RAS is calibrated to keep us safe so we don't get hurt or injured. Okay, so you're saying our body's designed for us not to be successful? It's designed to keep you from pushing that envelope a little bit further. But what you need to do is trick your RAS, your reticular activating system. You need to trick it by saying, okay, I'm just going to push it a little bit. And still push it. And you know what? Once your Raz sees that nothing happened that was bad, I guess he or she can handle that. 
And I guess that can be the new marker. What you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is practice being uncomfortable. I'm not saying to be in pain. I'm saying be uncomfortable. When you can become uncomfortable, then you learn. You learn from your lessons. You learn when you're uncomfortable. You don't learn when you're comfortable. You learn when you're uncomfortable. People tell me, John, I have a bad memory. No, you don't. Believe you have a great memory. And I'm not going to go through the whole exercise right now, but we use certain techniques to allow people to employ creativity to allow them to make memory ridiculous and then they remember things. Just in the short time you've been, let's say, uh, watching or listening to this show, I know that I have given you some powerful nuggets that you don't even have to pay me or buy anything to use. You can use these right now in your life. And you can also go to BelieveMeAchieve.com for more of my amazing and many free nuggets. You know, I have a, a motivational show on uh, every day called IFYL, Inspirations for Your Life. I have a show that's on every Tuesday and uh, every Friday on KCAA um, radio that goes all over the world. I have a show called Jay Moore Tech Talk every Friday. I have a motivational short that come, uh, video that comes out every Friday. I have a Science Friday with John every Friday. I have a JCM Academy business coaching every Monday. And we've just added a brand new series called our J Moore Tech Reels every day. They're 40 second reels that give you powerful information about technology. If that's not enough for you, go to believemeachieve.com and scroll down to where it says John C. Morley's recent articles. I write an article between 800 to 1800 words twice a week. One on motivation and one on technology. Some of the things we talked about is um, nanobots, xenobots. Um, xenobots basically are bots that are put together with an AI computer and um, they're using cells uh, and they can heal and um, reproduce, et cetera. And they're all made from a computer. The I should say that how they be how they would be put together is all you know um, formulated by a computer. People in our world don't care how much you know. I've learned this until they know how much you care. And uh, I know we're almost running out of time here, but I want to share something, and it's with uh, Dale Carnegie. Dale Carnegie said something pretty remarkable. If you want to win friends and influence people, you need to just do two things, for starters. One, learn the person's name. My name is John C. Morley. Learn my name. Take the time to practice it. If you don't know how to say my name or somebody else's name, you know, that looks like a beautiful name. I don't want to botch it up. Would you mind helping me on the pronunciation, please? Sure. It's Arbolopolis. Arbolopolis. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll say, um, even if it's a, na a name that I know, I'm like, and I want to get a more of a memory track. I'm like, could you do it? Could you spell that for me? How do you spell it? Sean, is that S S E A N? Sean. And how is the last name spelled? Aridopolis. It's A R D A P. Okay. So you get the idea. The second thing you need to do is to strive to become genuinely interested in the other person. And you might say, well, why would I do that? Isn't it about me? No, it's not about you. Put your ego aside. Leave it at the door. You're not important. Okay? The other person is. Strive to become genuinely interested in the other person. Maybe they're talking about a trip they took to Nova Scotia. And uh, they talked about how they went um, sailing. You could say something like, uh, when it was your turn to speak, wow, you went to Nova Scotia and you went sailing? I love sailing. I competitively sailed for my whole life. Really? Yeah. And if that person wants to engage me, you know what they would say is, you know, John, that's really remarkable that you're a sailor too. Um, I was just curious, what got you passionate into sailing? You know how I start a lot of my conversations when I meet a prospect or anyone? I say, you know, and I don't lie. I find things that are very unique. And I'm like, so you're into golf, really? Um, yeah, I play golf a lot too. 
just curious. Um, do you have a handicap? Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite course? Or I got to ask you, what made you want to pick up the club? Because I know several times I wanted to give up when I was like five and I didn't become a great golfer until I was like 10. Yeah. He's like, I had the same experience. It, it was just bad timing. And some people go through high school and they're on a team and they're terrible until they leave. Same thing happened to me with skiing. Um, I didn't ski very well until I left a high school and decided to pursue it coming back at college and becoming an intermediate skier. So I think certain things are timing. And so when we become genuinely interested in the person, it shows, it shows in their eyes. You can hear it in the tonality of their voice. You cannot fake it. You have to mean it. If you're a salesperson, you're trying to fake it. You might appear to impress somebody, but you're going to be found out soon. And when you are, you're going to be kicked to the curb very hard. I always say this one thing. It might take hours, could take days, could take uh, weeks, months, years to build trust. And what you can do in a fraction of a second is destroy it. So life is all about choices. And if we understand those choices, just like I have here on uh, on BelieveMeAchieve.com, there's so much content out there. My question is, if you want to improve your life, why aren't you watching it? John, so many brilliant points that you brought up. I, I hope you'll come back so we can really dive into them. I, I could just listen to you forever, but I'd love for you to share with people, how can you specifically help them? And sure. we've got your contact information here. What is the value you can bring to our audience? So because I learned how a lot of marketing advertising companies work, and I should say they don't work. Um, I wrote an article of how and why I fired a multi-million dollar marketing advertising company. And I learned that you don't build a company by having an ego. You build a company by doing something you're passionate about, and that has to be in alignment with what people want. So how do I help people? It could be them needing a press release. It could be them uh, needing a, a video shot if they're in New Jersey. Uh, it could be perhaps uh, that they have a story and they need that story told. I can capture that story. Um, we build very creative social media. Do you know we post about seven or eight times a day? And here's something that's going to impress you. And I say this to you not to impress that it's coming from me. I say this to impress you about social media. We're posting seven or eight times a day with all my companies. And do you know why we're not getting banned? I'll give you one guess. We're not paying anybody to do that. We're not getting banned because I never sell in my content. My content educates. And when you live a life and have that passion and want to educate people, People will listen to you and want to hear your stories all day long. That's the secret. Become genuinely interested in other people. I have a neurosurgeon coming on my show in another month or two. Why? Because they love the fact that I want to learn. Just like they want to learn, I want to learn. I mentor 28 students in my internship programs every year. And I tell people, when you come into the program, don't expect to just be a learner. I expect you to be a teacher as well, because I want to continue to learn. If you decide that you want to learn for the rest of your life, you'll be successful. Success is not a destination, ladies and gentlemen. It's a journey. And as soon as you realize that, you'll continue to be successful. And I can and will get that story out to the world about you and your business in a way that will highlight you and give you the credibility. I also do podcast coaching. And our whole team also puts together programs and can help you get exposure. There's so many things we can do to get your story out in the world. So reach out to me. Uh, you can go to orbitalmediahub.com for the for the social um, stuff and all the PR stuff. But you can check out all my great stuff because I know that you have a story inside your heart. And I'll find it for you. And I'll get it out to the world in a way that's not cheesy. And it will make people want to learn about you. I'll make people curious. And they'll ask questions. And then you'll be able to solve their problems. And then guess what? They're going to buy. And you won't have to sell anything. 
John, you're so authentic and so passionate and what you're sharing is really resonating with me in so many ways because that is so true. It's not about selling something to someone. It's about bringing value and you're bringing value in so many ways. And I really encourage our audience watching on the live or listening on the live or the replay to contact you. Get off of your sofa, people, and do something. John has this area of expertise across the board that he can change your life. You have to make the first step. I'll lead you to the, you can, I can lead you to the water and provide you the best quality, but you have to decide to drink it. Brilliant. Thank you so much for being here again. I hope that you'll come back and visit us and continue to inspire people around the world, John. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Jacqueline. It was a proper privilege. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you, everyone who is listening or watching on the live or the replay. We do appreciate you. And if you'd like to come and share your story, we'd like to hear it. Just go over to our website, usaglobaltv.com, and book your session. I want to give a shout out and thanks to a few of our sponsors. We have just a couple minutes. If you're in the Houston, Texas area, please go visit our dear friend and colleague, Zane Carruth. She will be at Neiman Marcus. And she actually got this engagement herself. It's called Books to Bed and World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. It's about her book that she wrote, the World's First Tooth Fairy Ever series. And now there's a set of pajamas waiting for you, for your children, for your grandchildren. All you have to do if you can't make it is to email rsvphouston at neimanmarcus.com. And Zane has her own TV show here called Elegance, Polished Demeanor and Posh Living. We streamed it yesterday, USA Global TV and Radio, as well as on our partner channel, E360 TV. So let's take a look at Zane's sponsorship, and then we'll be back with one more before we leave for our next show. Here we go. Hi, my name is Zane Carson Carew, and I'm the author of this book, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Reading is magic. Studies have shown that reading to your children lays the foundation for greater success in life. Reading helps develop language and vocabulary skills, it helps improve memory, and it encourages curiosity and inspires creativity. The benefits are immeasurable, and as a parent, you'll benefit too. In only 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll be creating more memories and a bonding experience that will last for years to come. So take time to read to your children. Read them books about things that engage and interest them. Tales of fairies and magic fascinate children, and as everyone knows, the Tooth Fairy is at the top of the list. If your child loves magic, wands, adventure, and what child doesn't, you'll love reading them books from the trademarked series, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Follow along as Abella, the world's first tooth fairy, accidentally starts the tooth fairy tradition. Learn the tricks of being a professional tooth fairy in the book, Abella Starts a Tooth Fairy School. Your child's imagination will soar as you read the adventures of Abella and her magic wand. These wonderful books are available at worldsfirsttoothfairy.com and at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. Thank you so much to Zane, who's become a very dear friend and part of the reason that I was even able to retire from my corporate career and start here doing what it is I'm doing since 2020. So I have a special place in my heart for Zane. A couple of quick announcements. We do have our reunion show that is coming up on January 14th. This is open to anyone who's been a guest or any of our team members or our fans. It's your 15 minutes of fame to promote yourself and you get to hang around and meet the other people who are there for that particular hour. We'll be live streaming for six hours on January 14th. A quick plug for myself, and then we'll go to our sponsorship. We have a series of books that we've put out since 2021, and most of them are focused on listening. John was talking to you about authenticity, and he obviously is very passionate about what he does. We're very passionate about listening at an elevated level. So we have a policy here where we don't interrupt people. We let them share and speak. And so what are some of the, the golden nuggets or gems about listening at an elevated level? 
You'll find out more in our books, especially our children's book series, Lady Ella and the Amazing Adventures, as well as Mastering the Power of Elevated Listening. Okay, we're going to go to uh, one more of our sponsors for today, and then we'll be signing off. Our next sponsor is the British School of Excellence with founder, Mr. Philip Sykes. Let's take a look. This program is brought to you in part by the British School of Excellence and founder, Mr. Philip Sykes, building confidence, changing lives. Do you share our view that etiquette is a set of modern life skills that are essential for personal and professional success? Join us as an etiquette coach and change people's lives through the power of etiquette and manners. The last few days have been really amazing. I uh, had a trainer trainer course from uh, the British School of Etiquette. And I must say it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made and one of the best investments I've made in, in my own training and development. Now words alone will not describe the transformation and the positive path that I have traveled with the British School of Etiquette. I find really, I, I learned a lot from the lessons this time I came. The last few days with the British School of Etiquette have been fantastic. And what I've learned now is really beyond my expectations. This is the most rewarding experience and the best investment I have made this year. It was just great, I learned so much and when I go back to Belgium I will incorporate a lot of it uh, into um, my day-to-day -day life and business. It's been absolutely wonderful for the whole week that we were here. I feel transformed and I feel like blowing a trumpet and tell people come and do this school, this class is the best, this is the best school ever. Uh, you should take it, it's just, it will change your life immediately. I am now able to teach other people how to bring the best of them. Thank you, basically. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to our clients for their testimonials on the Train the Trainer program. Our exponential and global growth is so significant that we have evolved from the British School of Etiquette to the British School of Excellence, where we're investors in people. Let us invest in you and your career. Contact us to become an etiquette coach. Go to thebritishschoolofexcellence.com. Start your career and elevate your success today. Well, that wraps it up for today. Thank you again for being here on Hot Topic. Our next show is The Listening Mentor, where we'll be focused on helping you come up with solutions for deeper connections, better relationships, and more authentic conversations, much of which is covered in our new book, Mastering the Power of Elevated Listening. This book includes two quizzes, a pre-assessment to test your listening skills, because let's be honest, we all think we're great listeners. Take the test and see where you stand. And it also has a post assessment after you're done reading the book. We also have case studies and testimonials. A big shout out to my book coach and dear friend, Mr. Red O'Laughlin. I really appreciate you and everything you've done to help get this content out into the world. Thank you again to our special guest, John C. Morley. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.